plant biologist with a research interest in plant microbe interaction and plant epigenetics with the underlying goal of applying this knowledge for crop improvement. His active research career began in pro with Professor Swapan Kumar Datta's lab, working on a rice pie technology project in the Department of Botany, University of Calcutta. He got his PhD from University of British Columbia in Canada, where he studied the role of RNA silencing as an antiviral defense response against an important pathogenic plant virus in the lab of Dr. Ellen Sanfasson. Following his research interest in translation, basic research to applied research for crop improvement, he moved to Professor Steve Jacobson's lab at the University of California, Los Angeles, the USA, for his postdoctoral training. As a postdoc fellow, he is involved in developing CRISPR-based epigenome editing tools and using viruses as delivery agents. Dr. Ghoshal's research work has led to several publications and presentations around the world. Moreover, the tools developed are actively being used for crop improvement. Besides pursuing his research, <clears throat> he mentors several undergraduate students by engaging them in active plant research to help them identify their career goals. Dr. Hoshal is also actively involved in undergraduate teaching and learning at the University of California, Los Angeles. He serves as a reviewer in several undergraduate research fellowship committee. Now I request Dr. Hoshal to share his screen and start the talk. Over to you, sir. Um, it was a very well explained, very illustrative, very nice uh, presentation. I'm sure many of the viewers uh, and I have also received many positive feedbacks. So uh, we would like to know a little bit about you. Um, could you uh, kindly say a few words describing your journey so far as a plant scientist? Uh, okay. Um, so I would start from my school days. Uh, sure. So I, I, I always loved biology. That was for sure. Uh, I don't know why it was more, uh, I, I, I always felt that I can see biology happening. Uh, and that's why I always loved biology. Uh, and I was studying, uh, so my schooling was in Calcutta, uh, in Kolkata, uh, <laughs> in Orient School. And then uh, when I was in grade 12, as you know, uh, I had two choices. One was that everybody goes, I think most people go. I also went for medical school or <laughs> the other one was to go for research. And just by looking at me at this point, you know that I, I was not a, I didn't qualify my medical entrance exam. So that was out at that point. Um, and then I got into uh, the, I got into my uh, college. Uh, that was Surendranath College, uh, and, and I went for botany. Now, botany was obviously not my choice. My choice was to study microbiology. Um, but when I got into botany, I realized that botany is actually uh, like it's an umbrella where I was able to study microbiology, uh, virology, genetics, uh, plant biochemistry. So, so I was getting a lot of a um, uh, lot of knowledge, like a lot of, I was, I was able to know a lot of things, starting from uh, evolutionary biology. So it, it encompassed a lot. And also at that time, there were a few professors in my college. Uh, I would like to name them, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Vishwanath Pomek, Professor Nimai Chandra Barui, and Professor Prabir Kumar Ganguly. Uh, they somehow nurtured uh, an interest uh, within me for plant science. And then I moved to, uh, for my master's, I moved to the uh, you know, Department of Botany at the University of uh, Calcutta, uh, where I started taking, where my special paper was plant physiology, biochemistry, and molecular biology. And that's when I came to know about this uh, scientist his name was Professor Swapan Kumar Datta. He had just moved to, uh, he was going to move to uh, our department. And I, I joined his lab. And honestly, that's when I realized uh, that as a plant scientist, I can also contribute to the mankind. Uh, he actually, uh, he was very energetic. 
and he actually showed that how you can basically bring plant research straight into um, like it was directly applied and that was uh, uh, that was very very fascinating uh, we would go to different uh, meetings that were basically directly meeting with common people uh, mm -hmm. to make them understand the importance of biotechnology, transgenic plants, GMO. So it was amazing. And then for my PhD, I moved to your University of British Columbia. Uh, and there, uh, what I learned was that how to do science, uh, how to manage time, how to uh, how to logically think, uh, how to scientifically write. So that's what I learned and I nurtured at uh, University of uh, British Columbia. And uh, Ellen, uh, uh, my supervisor, she helped me grow as a scientist. And then after I completed my uh, PhD, I got another option for a, that was a short postdoc that I did in Dr. Deanne Roshan's lab at University of British Columbia. Uh, it was a very short one. It was like for nine months, uh, where I was also studying another virus, uh, cucumber necrosis virus. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. And then uh, there uh, also, I learned like that was a move from one virus to the other that actually broadened uh, my knowledge about viruses because the virus then I was using was not showing symptom recovery. It was a completely different virus and it would, it would completely kill the plants. And that was, again, another uh, interesting experience. But by the end of that postdoc, uh, I wanted to learn more about not only plant viruses. I, my interest was getting into more into gene regulation, epigenetics. Uh, and that's when I, uh, I got an offer and I also took that offer from Professor Steve Jacobson's, the Jacobson's lab. So right here at this point, I learned a lot of plant epigenetics. And then, so that was like the basic side. So I'm learning plant epigenetics. And at the same time, I am able to develop these tools based on my plant virus interaction studies. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm developing plant virus delivery tools. And we are also developing CRISPR-based epigenome editing tools. And here in this lab, it's, uh, it's like I, I learned so much about gene regulation. I learned about uh, all the cutting edge research, like next gen sequencing, uh, different, all different kinds of, I would say, cutting edge technology that's going on. That's what I am into at this point. And that's uh, actually helping me to broaden the way I think. Uh, and that so far, that's, that's where my research is. I'm enjoying my time in Professor Steve Jacobson's lab, uh, and I will see next where I go. But this has been an amazing, uh, amazing time as a plant scientist because I have gotten involved with so many uh, good uh, PIs or good mentors, and all of them have somehow contributed in my growth. That's yeah. great. Okay, uh, my uh, next question is um, evolutionary plants and its pathogens are continuously evolving. According to you, which uh, tools and techniques will help us to better understand plant pathogen interaction? Um, this, is, this is actually, again, a good question. Uh, I would say uh, the, the, the new technologies that are coming out, like Next gen sequencing, CRISPRs for sure. Um, then I would say metabolomics a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. All of this, combining all of this, uh, will help us to get a holistic approach. Because at this point, I don't see uh, research being taking place only in an isolated form. What I mean by this is if you are doing research and if you're only looking at plant viruses, Mm -hmm. and nothing else, then that's not going to work. Now, mm -hmm. at this point, we have to understand or get a holistic approach mm -hmm. uh, where we have to combine these tools and techniques like next-gen sequencing, CRISPRs, and again, coming back to metabolomics or the new uh, proteomic techniques that are coming out uh, that are highly sensitive. Uh, and that will obviously help us understand 
the plant pathogen interaction. Uh, in, in addition, I would, I, I'm not sure how much, but I think somehow uh, single cell uh, sequencing will also help a lot yes. mm -hmm. uh, in understanding plant pathogen interaction. Okay, uh, my next question is that uh, with the knowledge of plant pathogen interaction, is it possible to predict and prevent plant diseases in the future? Okay, uh, so uh, first let me talk about prediction, that whether we are able to predict or not. Uh, I would say yes. Uh, how? By, so we have, a, at this point, we have some amount of knowledge. Uh, on plant virus interaction. We can obviously use this to generate models by computer simulations and to basically predict future diseases. But also I feel like most of the knowledge that we have uh, is not complete because you see that we take mostly a biased approach. Most of the time we study plant pathogens, like just calling pathogens because we always think that either microbes are pathogens, but that is not always the case, right? Um, they are also helpful uh, to the plants. Uh, now, we always take this biased, uh, biased approach where we are looking at a particular agricultural crop and studying a pathogen. But there are a great number of uh, pathogens that are present in the wild, in like in forest. In forest, you don't get diseased plants. So in, in a forest, uh, in the wild environment, plants, viruses, or plant or under the bacteria, they are all, they are all uh, maintaining themselves in an equilibrium. So I think if we can get, a, get an, some idea from those, about those pathogens or those, uh, those uh, microbes, because some of the microbes can jump into our agricultural crops, and that may basically cause havoc. So that's something, if we incorporate that information, and then obviously we will be able to predict. And once we predict, I think we obviously can prevent also. Uh, but for that, again, we need to do more research. Uh, in line with this, I just thought about, uh, this just came to my mind recently that computer simulations help uh, helps us a lot nowadays. Mm -hmm. Because I don't remember uh, in which year, but I was attending a conference uh, and there, uh, one of the scientists for plant viruses, what he was proposing is to make mutations in plant viruses to check the effect. So his idea was okay. that plant viruses are mutating. Mm -hmm. So let's create new mutations within the viruses mm -hmm. and then infect plants and then mm -hmm check whether, uh, what is the effect. But he never, I don't think he got funding for that research because you never know what's going to the virus once you mutate it and that yes. might get harmful. Yes. Yeah. Okay, as we are nearing the end of the interview, uh, I have one last question. Uh, uh, what, uh, what would your words of advice be to the young research fellows out there? Okay, uh, so when you say, um, I feel like, uh, in the world of research, I consider myself also as young, but I believe <laughs> sure. you're talking about younger. Uh, yeah. younger <laughs> Your experiences uh, mainly. Yeah. Uh, what, I would, uh, what I would say is that um, it's mostly for undergraduate students or postgraduate students or PhDs. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a few things that I would like to say is that obviously you need to have passion for what you're doing. If you're coming into research, then just keep in mind that um, this is a 24 hours, seven days work. Mm, so true. Don't think that, uh, don't think that uh, you might get, you, you have to enjoy it. That's my point, mm. right? You, you can't complain about your life because I myself have complained when I was a PhD student. It was like, oh my God. But then at one point I realized the more I complain, uh, the more miserable my life is going to be, mm -hmm. right? So, and then once I stopped uh, complaining that, oh, my life is not moving forward, and that happens to every PhD student. I can tell you every PhD student so far I have seen uh, in their third or fourth year, they would sometimes say that, 
I'm going to leave my research. It's not going anywhere. Uh, so uh, have passion for it. The next thing is make sure that you understand the science, like what is known and then what is not known. Try to, try to get that differentiated early on in your career. Mm -hmm. Third, I would add is uh, you need obviously need to learn techniques like lab work, but at the same time, develop other skills uh, like uh, how to make presentations, uh, how to better manage your time, uh, how to, I want to all, I, I, I myself don't like multitasking, but sometimes you have to. So how to multitask while not affecting the quality of your work. Uh, so you need to develop those kind of soft skills uh, and just enjoy what you're doing. Because uh, as I said in my last slide, I showed that 99% times it is failure. Uh, mm -hmm. But the one time you're going to get it done, that's, that's like the excitement. And I can tell you that happened to me also. Like I, I was in my third year of my PhD and my projects were not going anywhere. And then we uh, did this in vivo labeling experiment. And it was like, I, I, I had no idea how to move forward. And then I discussed with my PI, we came up with this idea and I tried it. And the first time it worked, uh, what my PI, Dr. Ellen Sanfason, what she said was that, uh, Bashu, enjoy this moment because you will not get it probably in the next few years, you might not get it. So uh, it, it came after a long time, but it was really a good feel. Uh, so, so basically that's, that's what I have to say. And I think uh, if I can do it, everyone who wants to do it can, can achieve it. It's, you have to just have believe in yourself. Yeah. Great. That's so motivating. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was it was simply wonderful having you here. Everybody loved your talk. I can see from the comments. Uh, and Thanks. I hope we will see you again in the future on Bioengine. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. I, would, um, I, uh, I, I didn't add it to my talk. Uh, but while preparing the talk, I was thinking that there will be more. I'm at a point where it's like, uh, I'm not able to discuss about my unpublished data, so I didn't present it also. And probably in the next few months, uh, I will have uh, more stuff coming out. And I will obviously would like to uh, present my data again in front of yes, this we are diverse really community. <laughs> and before, before leaving, I would like to thank uh, the BioEngine group again. It's again an amazing platform. And uh, to all you, to all of you, I must say that this is actually, if I remember right, um, I, I have, so I have, I moved to Canada in the year 2009, but somehow every time I went back to India, uh, there was either some emergency or I didn't get time. Uh, I never presented my work back in India. So this is the first time I am presenting my work to India.